so crazy, you know, people always ask me, like, yo, what's your favorite sneaker? La, la, la. And my favorite sneaker is revealed in my film, Rock Up 45s. And I don't want to spoil it. I just hope that people download it, stream it, or for Vimeo or for iTunes or whatever VOD platform starting July 24th. But in the last couple of months, a shoe that's very dear to me is the Puma Suede because I had the opportunity to design a collaboration with the brand for the 50th anniversary of the model. Now, to tie it into the last film, peep this. I gave them a cassette of a Stretch and Bobito radio show from back in the 90s and they popped it on the box and then they popped my name on it, which was crazy. And uh, I got to shout out my man Vaz, Nice and Nasty Vaz. He used to be a, 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 a host and slash DJ of a, one, across 110th Street on WKCR, which was the same station that me and Stretch were on. But he used to, you know, take the show. He's a, he was a, a interviewee in Stretch and Bobito, ready to change lives. And, um, and here's the Puma Suede's. You know, I tried to bring it back to the 70s. Some b-ball classic. My name is on the inside, boom, boom. Where'd you get those is on the inside. My name is on the side. So these blew out. They already sold out uh, Puma.com. They sold out a bunch of stores. I'm very happy about that. And I'm very grateful to the opportunity to have my spin on such an iconic shoe. Boom. I'm fortunate in that, in that, <clears throat> you know, I started painting sneakers in the 70s. I took the cue from my older brother, Ray Garcia, who gets no, he, I mean, other, if you read my book, Where'd You Get Those New York City Sneaker Culture, 1960, 1987, you know that he's the one in my family that passed me the torch. You know, he passed me the baton and I took it like 80,000 80, times, you know, harder than what he did, but I took all my cues in terms of customizing from him. And then I started painting shoes and I started getting a rep in the 80s because I started hanging out downtown, you know, with third base and I was meeting De La Soul and they was like asking search like, yo, who's your man with the with the gold Puma Sky Alexis? And, and then eventually I wrote an article for the Source magazine called Confessions of a Sneaker Addict. It wound up becoming the, the uh, first article in media history documenting sneaker culture. So push forward, Many years, you know, my rep in that space has been one of a of an ambassador, one of a progenitor, one of a, a historian. With my book, where'd you get those? Eventually, that coupled with the with the with the with the fact that I'm a ball player officially. You know, I played ball in 43 countries, six continents. I played pro ball in Puerto Rico. You know, I played in a lot of tournaments in New York. You know. I've crossed up a couple of people. I played an annual mixtape tour. I was in a Nike freestyle commercial. All this history is in my film, Rock Rubble 45s. But one thing that did not make the film is my stamp on sneaker collabs. If you were a filmmaker, there's no way you're going to fit 50 years of someone's life in 90, 96 minutes. So, you know, a lot of cats during the Q&As uh, at the premieres, they've been like, yo, how come you didn't include the, the Nike Air Force One you know, times cool Bob loves, but uh, but I'll break it down for you. My first collab was actually in 2004 with a German brand called K1X. They had the Chief Glider model, and at the time, I was the editor in chief of a of a magazine called Bounce from the Playground. It was the only publication in the history of the sport as well as publishing dedicated year round to outdoor basketball. I was one of the co-founders, uh, co edit editor-in-chief. And so when they hit me up to do the collab, I was like, you know what? Instead of putting my name on it, I'm going to put the magazine logo on it. And people are going to know it's me because people relate the magazine to me. Um, and then in 2005, Adidas hit me up. They were like, yo, we're doing the 35th anniversary of the Shell Toe. Oh, we're like, I went from like a tiny brand, you know, like, uh, not even sold in the United States to being with Adidas, another another German brand, oddly enough, you know. But the the you know the shell toe is like that's the most iconic shoe. That and the Rod Laver and the Stan Smiths for Adidas. Um, so to get a chance to spin, you know, my my 
my ideas on that silhouette was crazy. Um, at the time, I was part of a basketball performance group called Project Playground. We were doing halftime shows for the Knicks, for the Mavs, for uh, University of Tennessee, UConn. And um, that history is in my film, Rock Rebel 45s as well. So, but I didn't put my name on it. I did it with the Project Playground. And then uh, in 2007, the Ooh La La came along. The Air Force One was celebrating their 25th anniversary. And, you know, it was interesting because Nike had all these people doing collabs. De La Soul had the Dunk, Stash had the Air Max. And all these cats is coming up to me like, yo, what do you think about, what do you think about? And I was just like, yo, why, like, why have I not done a collab with Nike? I, 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 it was like, how could that be? You know, like, I'm the one that kind of opened up the door for this whole thing. And, you know, you got people coming to me for the cosign, <laughs> you know? Um, so it worked out. Uh, I did seven model. I did seven releases, seven different colors in one year. That's the most, to my knowledge, of any collaborator in the history of this whole shit. Maybe, I don't know. That's what I'm just saying, just I, as far as I know. And uh, the Air Force One is like, that's the ooh la la. So, you know, I'd be like the sneaker of sneakers from my childhood. So to have an opportunity to, you know, to dress it and put, you know, and, and I did the F, uh, I did the Puerto Ricos, I did the B, the B from Broccoli's, I did the, uh, the, uh, the mac and cheese, you know, and it's funny because like in recent years, I've seen Nike release the, the mac and cheese. I mean, they didn't do it with my name, you know, and I've seen them release the, the, the red uppers with the gum bottoms. That was my idea. They didn't put them with my name, <laughs> but it's all good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was just happy to, to have that opportunity. And, you know, boom, they, they flew out. They flew out. I, I didn't know this until recently, but, you know, I'll be seeing people tagging my name on Instagram and whatnot. Yo, them sneakers are selling for like five, six hundred dollars, yo. It's crazy. They were like a buck, buck twenty-five when they came out. Now, in 2009, I did the Prokez Royal Flash for the 30th anniversary. That was a big shoe in my childhood as well. Um, and in 2016, I did the Ooh La La of, of Pumas, the, the the Clyde. And I flipped them out, you know, because I feel like, and I did in 2018, I did the Puma Suede. But I feel like for Puma and for Adidas, you know, it's been it's been lost that these that these models were initially basketball performance shoes. You know, they become so so identified with the hip hop movement, you know, and the, and the b boy and b girl culture. So when I when I had the opportunity to put my colors and fabrics on them and everything, I really want to to bring it back, like instead of zooming out, like zooming in on it and just bringing it to the to the seventies aesthetic of when I got introduced to the Pumas as basketball sneakers, because I'm a ball player, so, and I'm a hip hop head too, but I'm a ball player first. So I think that's, you know, all, uh, both Adidas and and uh, and Puma, and Nike for that matter too, because the Air, same thing happened with the Air Force One, people forgot that those are basketball sneakers, you know? Um, so my job in, the, in each of those cases has been to like, to just provide relevance, you know, that, that I mean, that's been my, my role in the sneaker space the whole through the whole way through is, is I've always just been like documenting and giving people information. Where sneaker culture is now is like unfathomable compared to what we experienced in the 60s and 70s and 80s coming up. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of things that, you know, some of the older cats uh, at the at the conventions and stuff that I go to and the cultural gatherings. They're always like, you know, they're all like little curmudgeons, like, oh man, it ain't like it used to be, or whatever, whatever, you know. But I'm like, yo, you know what? There's still a lot of people out there that are fresh with their sneaker choice. And there's more selection for the consumer now than ever before. In my era, you had to travel to New Orleans to get the drop that was there. You couldn't order it online, you know. You had to customize your shoe to get a green stripe. But now you could you could go on Nike ID and be like, oh, I want the green stripe on the you know, on the dunks or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity now for the for each individual to really be unique, you know, and that's supported by the brands and the and the sneaker stores. And uh, and also now there's a whole nother group that can benefit off of the industry. 
prior, it was only three. The brands, the distributors, and the shops. But now you got a fourth, the reseller. The resale market is bananas. You got 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds selling their sneakers for 100 bucks, buck 50, you know, learning business at a very early age. I don't think that's a bad thing because you could take away all that and you still got the head who is like, yo, you know what? Everybody's wearing that. I'm going to go complete far left and wear this. Or everybody's talking about Nike, well, I'm going to wear Saucony's, or I'm going to wear whatever. Like, you know, it's just, there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ability to be like left field and be unique and, and have the love for the shoes that you have on and, and have the love for, you know, appreciation for what other people wear. So I think that's a good thing. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't suggest that people get clouded by all the money that's involved in it. Now you can still have an innocent view of the shoes that you have on.